FM Wine Guide and this week I'm here to talk about uh, a big beautiful treat yourself wine. I just ran a half marathon this weekend so I decided it was time to do something nice for myself and while I don't believe you have to spend a lot of money to enjoy wine all the time, I do believe that every once in a while you should get yourself something nice. So today I have a bottle of Turnbull Napa Cabernet. We've been going through developing our palette and uh, we've tried fruity dry reds and all the whites and now it's time for a level where most people get to and they tend to kind of hang out here for a long time. It's time for big, bold, assault your palate, full-bodied dry red wines. It's time for oak, it's time for tannin, it's time for Cabernet Sauvignon. And I thought about this one for a while. What was I going to pick? Should I do something weird like a Monastrell or a Barolo or a Bordeaux? And while all of those are wonderful things to try, I just thought, let's go with the king, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this is Turnbull from Napa Valley and it has a lot of big famous neighbors uh, right there between Opus One and Robert Mondavi and Louis Martini. It's right there, right in the heart of Napa Valley in Oakville. And uh, yet yeah, this bottle, uh, this winery is still uh, a family owned entity. It's still um, independently owned. They use no chemical additives, fertilizer, um, or anything to add to the wine. So all very natural. Um, and so when you get a bottle of Napa, this is Napa on the label, that's where it's from. You are paying a little bit of a premium for that name. And what are you getting and why are you paying that money? Now this bottle costs about $55 to drink. Um, and that's pretty, pretty average or entry level for Napa. You can certainly end up paying a lot more for some Napa Valley Cabernet. I think 55 is a good place. Uh, but why, what are you getting? Well, first of all, the real estate in Napa is extremely expensive. So you're paying for that uh, expensive soil, that ground, that specific place. And, and why? Is Napa just a name or is there something really truly magical about that terroir? Um, I would say yes, Napa Valley soil because of the climate, because of the location, the elevation, the soil type, uh, everything, the night day temperature shift, everything about it has the potential to create some of the most complex, velvety, luscious, wonderful, bold uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in the entire world. And so for that, you're paying a premium for that real estate to grow the grapes in the first place. Second of all, you need to pay for some really quality oak to uh, frame and uh, accentuate uh, and kind of flavor that wine just a little bit. And then also you're paying for some very talented winemaker to come in and, and treat your wine to the best it can possibly be. So I've met Peter Heights uh, at Turnbull. I'm gonna pour myself a glass while we talk about Peter. Uh, Peter, I think, has a beautiful combination of both having a science mind and so understanding the actual chemistry behind what you need to do to the grapes to turn it into the end product. He understands instinctually all of the science and the math behind that. But then also within the same person, uh, he also has a poetic soul. And I think you need a little bit of an artistic poetic soul to really understand that wine is an experience uh, that is very transportive and emotional and, and full of memory. And that is something beautiful that I get when I drink Napa Valley Cabernet. I hope you pick up some Turnbull next time you wanna treat yourself and transport you away to that emotional, wonderful, beautiful experience of joy. Oh my word, that is elevated. So, so good. Pick up some Turnbull. <laughs>